Hello, this is the first video in the uh, summary series of the videos. So this will be a uh, summary of week one. Uh, I'm going to try to do a video for each part of week one um, so that I don't have one long video and it's annoying for you. You can just watch um, every video as you wish. wish. Yeah. Um, so let's start. The, I'm not going to really talk too much about the motivational plan and watching the video um, of Dan, Daniel Pink's drive explanation. Um, I really put that there so that you all could think about your purpose, you know, why you're uh, coming back to university despite um, all of the conflicts that are going on. Um, and so coming to sort of coming to grips with a plan um, should, I, I'm hoping, help sort of ground you in what you're doing, um, makes you sort of focus on why you're doing what you're doing. And so I really appreciate the time that you spent explaining sort of uh, where you're at, how you feel, and uh, what your plan is to be successful. So if you're having any trouble with that, um, following through with it, let me know if you ever want to discuss any part of, um, you know, what's motivating you, what you want to do, then um, yeah, just let me know. And we'll, I'll be sending out uh, inviting, you know, inviting you to advising um, times uh, here pretty quick. So uh, look for that and we'll do virtual advising um in a couple weeks actually so that, that'll be starting soon other than that let's get down into the first assignment the one uh really you guys were talking you guys are reading about um style and the reason i set it up style that way is that um i want you to think about your style and your writing before you even started really writing this um I want you to think about sort of how you were approaching it um but mainly the fact is you can see in the way that style is discussed in this chapter is that it is mainly the difference between a you know a writer as i mentioned in my email a writer and just somebody who's writing something um style is all about purpose it's all about strategy it's about decisions um and the authors go through each part of that when you're talking about um the multiple style choices that happen in dialect as talked about in the introduction um and the fact that they're is a possibility to uh, adopt both what have been considered sort of informal and formal styles in your writing. Um, and that, but again, that is all about strategy. It's about purpose. Like, why are you writing in a, a certain dialect? Why are you uh, bringing in a informal register or a, uh, a non-academic uh, or non-standard English register in when you're writing something that um, gen or conventionally requires a formal standard um, English register or dialect. Um, so those choices are yours as a writer, right? What, why are you doing those things? Um, and those um, ultimately are associated with what audience you're writing toward. And they really point that out is that another big difference between a writer and just writing something is you're, you are con constantly thinking about um, how your audience is going to respond to this. And then as a writer, you are really participating in, I hate to say it, this, but you're really participating in a, a manipulative act. You are, um, if you are writing something using rhetorical strategies, um, you know, thinking about how your word choice, sentence structure, punctuation are going to impact the reader, you are really um, sort of creating uh, this spell um, to in enchant your reader to get them to see something through your eyes or the way you want them to see that you know you're shifting their perspective um you're narrowing their scope um uh, you're presenting something um so that they are captivated by your language choices um and then in the end the figurative language is the most significant aspect of that um because you are by using figurative language you are making associations um, to abstract concepts um, that may have not been considered before. Um, and so you are helping your reader really identify with the topic, uh, with the concept that you are trying to explain um, through you know, the figurative forms you have. And that's what I want you to consider is, well, how are the authors of your sources using figurative language uh, to try to turn your head a certain way, try to get you to think uh, about the topic, the concept, whatever it might be, 
in the way that they want you to think is like, well, you read something you say, oh, I never thought about it like that. Or I, you know, you read a, some figurative turn of phrase and you think, well, that is a perfect way to explain it. I've all, I've needed something to try to ground this. Um, and finally there's something that I can hold on to and say, oh, I see how this connects. Um, so I just want to, I'm going to show you a couple examples from a text that um, it, and that are fairly basic, uh, but I just, I, some people were saying they're having trouble identifying it. And so I want to show you how basic it could possibly be, uh, but it's significant at the same time. So let's take a look at a source here, share my screen with you. Um, this comes from a text about outbreak narratives. Um, so I'm going to start here with this one. This one I think is really interesting. So um, they're referring to uh, the outbreak of SARS and they talk a little bit about HIV in this text. Um, and mainly the idea of how do we create communities or how are communities constructed um, through, the, through the narratives we have about who we are and uh, how we associate with one another. Um, we've talked a little bit about that in this class. and. Um, I think it's a significant aspect of science, magic, and religion. Um, and so here we we see that the author is using this idea um, of the circuits of global infrastructure. And it's like, well, Troy, that's pretty simple. But that it's significant at the same time. Up until this time, up until this point in the text, that the text is really highly charged. Um, it's um it's full of tension and emotion. And looking at um, how the manipulation of language is constructing the networks in which we are able to um, or accept and combat uh, global or just major uh, disease outbreaks. And this little piece here, the circuits of global infrastructure, um, it helps ground the idea in the sort of the complexity of the the systems that we live within um, as far as what we re what we rely on uh, you know the the supply chains of how we access the things we have um, you know the idea that we are more highly connected now in our world than we have been in the past and so the idea of bringing in circuits here uh, it associates that sense of um, you know you're going inside of from our you know circuit would create circuit board and the complexity of a computer many people don't ever open up and look inside of their computers um, you know you might think about a circuit in in as far as like well how how we develop how do we create the technology by which we access you know electricity or information um, but the idea is here is it's grounding the inf this information thinking about it in the, it's a, the circuits of global infrastructure uh, take this sort of disconnection that's happening in the text and say, well, no, it's it's highly connected, and it's highly complex, and it's, it's difficult to understand. Um, so something simple, basic as that, uh, can play a, a major role in your recognition, your understanding, or just the connection you have with your audience, right? Um, I mean, that's huge, is just like using a simple analogy uh, to make a connection so that your audience is you know staying with you um, and if you look at the following sentence here uh the piece offers hiv and aids an important precedent of how we placed ourselves in the path of the virus and moved it around the world we well poised to do it again and explains what's turned that what turned a virus into a holocaust was not just a new infectious agent but a proliferate so you see that the following sentence, and this is talked about in the sentence structure and style, you have this really nice uh, medium length sentence that is introducing um, the idea of complexity. And then the long length sentence then, then describes the complexity. So how do these circuits work? What do we mean by circuits? It's a, it's a really nice uh, piece of writing where you have that medium length analogy and then really long length full explanation um, of what that circuit would look like. The, um, and then what follows down here, specific diseases blur together, blur together as an emerging, as emerging infections map the changing spaces, right? So uh, beyond, I mean, we have more and more of this uh, metaphorical language. You know, the diseases are blurring together. They're not actually blurring together. Um, but what they're causing is 
a disruption in the clarity of how these circuits work, of how these, and then as emerging infections map the change in places, obviously the infections aren't mapping uh, them, but they are creating their own systems, right? So we have these circuits of global infrastructure, but then you have the infections that are doing their own thing, they're creating their own ways, right? And again, that just helps ground this idea of what an outbreak narrative is, right? Um, I'll look at one more example just because I think it's simple and significant. Uh, so at the beginning of this text, um, and it's one reason is I have a, like a soft spot for verbs, um, which sounds really silly, Troy's soft spot for verbs. Um, but here, this one, this sentence, the question simmering beneath even the most sedate accounts was whether the disease with its unknown origins and alarming mortality rate might be the coming plague, right? And then we go on further on to the, right? But that idea, that beautiful verb, the question simmering beneath, right? Obviously the question isn't simmering, no, right? No, nothing simmers, right? Other than like liquids in a pot simmer, right? Um, so liquid simmer, questions don't simmer. So this really nice figurative verb uh, presents a sort of metaphorical association to how we as people in this day and age um, sort of are stuck in this really like tense uh, view of a world that could really blow up, boil over at any time, right? And that brings, but it's highly charged, right? You see the authors really charging the tension here, the question simmering beneath even the most sedate, right? So that contrast between you know, the simmering water and the sedate accounts, right? So really great construction that you have there. And so that's what I'm asking you to think about. What kind of really great, elegant constructions are the writers of your sources presenting? Some might be terrible. I, not everybody's a great writer, right? Um, and now I'm not saying this person is even the greatest writer, but these are just two examples uh, within just a few pages of the this this text that I would use, I would think, oh, yeah, that's a be you know, beautiful example that I would even maybe adopt in my own this idea if I'm writing about something like um, disease outbreak, using a verb like simmering, Ooh, that's really great. Um, so really to create that sense of imminent ten you know, t tension that's there. Um, what's that called, like temerity or something like that, trepidation, right? That's probably the word I'm looking for, trepidation. Um, so anyway, this is just the video, so it's talking about uh, the figurative language and, and how we use it. And so I'm just looking for you to think about your figurative language, uh, to think about your author's figurative language, and to start, as a, to me, that's a great starting point to develop um, where you're going conceptually with your argument is just through this, uh, this figurative lens, okay?